it is 17 degrees it was so cold that this truck hesitated when it started this morning and this truck i have had since it was new and this thing don't hesitate this dodge ram has been rock solid for me for 18 years it's brisk outside right now i need to get the trailer off of it then I need to go inside and see what it's like because there is no electricity inside right now. And I know that because I haven't been able to pull up my security system. And I saw 20 repair trucks on the way here within the last two, three miles. They're fixing the lines, getting everything back up. I'm gonna go up in here and start a fire and see if I can get this place warmed up. I'd be interested to see what the temperature is since it's been without power for two days. I'm just gonna do a quick walk around the house to make sure I don't have any damage or anything. I don't see any trees down in the immediate area. The pond is frozen over. I don't see any broken windows. Nothing got airborne and messed up the house. So that's good. We still haven't finished the platform for the propane tank, but it's 17 degrees and windy. This ground is probably frozen. I am not gonna be playing outside today. Everything is looking good on the house. Little things like that, I gotta get those away from the house. Pieces of plywood. We had winds well over 25 miles an hour. We had gusts up to 40s. When you've got that kind of weather, things can get airborne and do some real damage. So we're very lucky. I need to be better about getting this kind of stuff battened down well before a storm hits us. Here's the big question. What's it like inside? Come on in. It's actually feels pretty good. And so the question is, what's the temperature in here? It is 59 degrees. So being as how the power is out and I know it was out all night because my security system never came back on and gave me an update, which means I've got to come up with a battery backup for my security system. But since it was out all night and the house is 58 degrees, I'm pretty happy. You can see it's 16 outside, 58 inside, and, and yes, my little, my little table's a mess, but the mess is on the table, not everywhere else. Well, mostly not everywhere else. We've got a fire going in the wood stove. I've been checking things out inside the house. I'm getting ready to do some work. It's warm inside the house. And here's the thing that is the coolest. The all time low since the batteries have been in this thing is 39 degrees. Over the last 12 hours, I'm sorry, over the last 24 hours, it went down to 51 degrees. Over the last 36, 51 degrees. Over the last 48 hours, 51 degrees. So without power, this house only got down to 51 degrees at night. It was 10 degrees outside last night. I can't tell you how satisfying that is with the amount of work we put into this house to try and make it energy efficient and temperature stable to know that it should, in theory, be very easy to heat and cool this house. And if we have a power outage, we don't have to worry so much about freezing. We should be okay. Since it's lunchtime, I just put a pot pie on. In about an hour, I'll have something to eat. The wind and the cold let us know for certain that winter is here. But even with winter fully upon us, there are still lots of things to do around the farm. Unfortunately, we have so much to do in the house that we have to split the duties between us in hopes that we can get it all done. I want to be able to get the cabinets put in and make the kitchen functional. So after I finished taping off the beams in the bedroom, Jafana came in after work and got busy on the master bedroom, transforming it from raw drywall to painted perfection.
see the paint on your nose. Sure. That wall's done, this wall's done. All the niches up there are done. Including the I might have to cut in the corners one more time. Do you know how long it's going to be? So I might get there one more time and then the swall's done. Just like when you get this so in like where this is, it, it would have like a This is Lauren's first time seeing the house since it's gotten drywall. Looks like a house now. It actually looks bigger in this area. Yeah, well, I'm hoping now soon that, it'll look cleaner. Now that there's but. like walls, I thought it would feel smaller. It just feels bigger, like more open. Yeah. Well, the white, the white definitely adds a feeling of space. The the gray of the of the OSB kind of made it feel closed in. Yes. I'm gonna start a fire. Okay. And I've got the I cranked it up so that. Um, okay. It, so it's, it's warm in here. It's set at 64, so I just cranked it up to 73. Okay. So it should warm up in here. Be cool. So your room. You want to see your room? Yeah. So our next project is to get this bathroom online. So I gotta paint this next. This is the next thing. This is my bathroom right here. Yeah, this is your bathroom. It's big. Yeah. And this is your room. Are the doorways here wider than the other? So some of the doorways are wider and some of them are just like the standard doorway. Okay. Um, like your doorway right here is standard doorway and that one's a little bit wider. So here's all your stuff. So I put your clothes on a rack. This room's all painted except for the niche right up there. So I gotta paint that right up there. While Jafana and Lauren tried to figure out how to stuff an yeah, entire apartment into a little bedroom, I got busy in the kitchen modifying the cabinets. Yeah. I've installed half a dozen sinks over the years but I've never installed a farm sink before. No matter how much planning you do, eventually the moment comes when you have to start cutting big chunks of wood out of the cabinet. And you better be right. Clean up the sides of it okay. tomorrow. You're gonna sand it? I'm gonna sand it into the proper shape. Okay, got you. It's not, it should be just a little bit tight right now. Oh, that's awesome. Do you wanna test it? <laughs> he hurt himself. See? What yeah. did he do today? He went to jump into the truck and he caught his side on the corner of the door. So he launched himself and it stopped him dead. Ow. And it hurt. And then he was afraid to jump into the truck. I think he thought I did it to him. Because really? I was standing right next to him. They didn't want to jump, so I had to pick him up from the truck. <laughs> pitiful. You're a pitiful little brown dog. Okay, that's back. Very gently. Yeah. Write it down on this. Okay. I just want to see. How much you have well, to go? Yeah. Does it hit? I don't want to split yeah. it on the box. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. 
and it's touching. And it's so, touching. Yep. So I gotta take it down some more. This is far from a conventional house build. Electricity on the front and rear walls of the main room are delivered by metal clad wire, MX cable. To get it across the room in the front, we're mounting it on strut and running down the corners of the beam for each section. The best time to do this is before I have a wall full of cabinets installed. And that means now. And yes, the irony of what if it was the camera that knocked me off the ladder, that did occur to me. With all the late nights, we've had to resort to splitting more than just the duties inside the house. I'm spoiled. Chifana cooks my dinner almost every night. But since I'm working late in here, I've had to resort to campfire food. Oh yes. I am having pot pies for dinner. Man, they look good. I can't wait to dig into these things. While my pot pies are cooling, I'm gonna go up here and put this last piece of strut on this side. I'm still perfecting my cooking skills with that wood stove, so a little crispy on the edge, but the rest of them look pretty good. Mm. It's really good. Now, I am taking a perfectly good cabinet and I'm cutting a big chunk out of the back of it so I can fit it around that beam. It has to be modified so that it fits. I just ripped it with a saw on both of the lines that I had cut out for the width of that. Now I'm gonna use the jigsaw and cut the rest of that out if I can reach it.
That should be pretty darn strong. 24 screws in that little section, so. It's like a bombshell. All right, and that will, will also add a whole lot of strength from when they're laying the granite yeah. on top of here. It stabilizes everything, it brings it back together. Doesn't look bad on the inside. That looks really good. Now what? The next thing I gotta do is get the strut up top, connect it all the way in pull the wires across, mount them on that strut. I forgot to buy the clips for it, so for the time being, we're gonna use little white zip ties, and we will come, <laughs> I'll come back in with a ladder and I will fasten them <laughs> later on, but right now, I need to get that so that I can get these cabinets in place. Okay, you know yeah. I'm gonna like the zip tie I know, thing. you're gonna, it's gonna drive you out of your mind. <laughs> Good. I know. Javanna helped me out with a couple things here. She's taking Lauren home, I think Lauren's run out of steam for the day. So it's just gonna be me and Apollo. I'm working on, my, my, my goal for the weekend was a little lofty and I tightened it in. It was a three day weekend and I haven't gotten much done. That happens sometimes and it's frustrating because when the time is gone, it's gone. But I'm trying to get the cabinets situated to get them in now. I just cut and modified that one. I have put this strut across to carry the electric lines that are going to power this wall here because that is a SIP wall. I did not want to run lines through it. Plus, in order to do that, I would have to be able to get through my posts. There's a whole lot. There are several reasons why I didn't want to do that. And we opted to just go with the metal clad lines. They're going to be surface mounted. They're gonna be carried across on the strut, then jump to the wall, come down the crook of the wall in the corner and mount to a box. All of that fits with the original idea of the house. It's kind of a rustic architecture, so everything's good. The only issue I've got is I'm sitting around here waiting because Jafana didn't want them to be silver colored. She wanted them to be white, so we spray painted them. It's a very warm day today. It started getting cool as the sun went down. So I pulled these things in so they can continue to cure. They're dry enough to touch, but not really dry enough to handle. So I want to give them a little bit more time before I try to lift them up and get a hole through the wall there and start stringing them across. In the meantime, I'm going to continue working on this farm sink. I want to see if I can get this put together so that it's ready to go, and while I'm doing that, it gives me time to let the stuff cure. Building this out to be able to support this, if this was a stainless steel sink, I would just put a two by four right here, or a two by three, and one on that side, and call it a day. It would be fine. Just put a little bit of, of support behind it to make sure it couldn't go back, and put some sealant that sealed it to that, you're good as gold. But this is fire clay and it's very strong, but I wanted to give it some more support. So what I'm gonna do is put a large piece of three quarter inch plywood all the way across. I'm gonna put some braces on the sides that hold that plywood. I'm gonna put a vertical piece on the back of it so that it has kind of an I-beam structure to it. And then I'm gonna put a piece on the front that also holds that up. At that point, we should be rock solid. That thing should not go anywhere. And it makes the cabinet itself even more stable, which is nice. There's also one more thing that I need to consider. We're going to have granite countertops. And because we're gonna have granite, that granite is going to rest on the top of the cabinet. And it also will be resting above this, on this side. You don't want to have that granite actually touching. You want to have the smallest, most minute space between 
the granite and the fire clay. Because granite is extremely hard and something's going to get broken and it's probably going to be the fire clay. So what I'm going to do is put a little spacer in there. So there's maybe a 32nd of an inch, maybe even a little less than that, but enough that when they apply a bead of sealant there, it'll seal all the way around, but it won't be putting stone on, on uh, porcelain pressure and causing this to break over time. It just so happens that this ram board is thick enough that it's probably enough of a space that almost like a gasket, I can stick it in here and use it as a spacer. And then after I get the pieces put on the sides, I can pull it out. It's got to get cut to the right, to the right size because it looks like it's still a little bit big. I've got my three quarter inch plywood. I've got my ram board paper spacer underneath of it. I have a piece that's going in the front. So far, that looks pretty good. The key to adjusting the fit of the farm sink is to go slowly. Once you remove the wood, it's gone. If you take your time, you'll wish that it had gone faster. But if you don't take your time, you'll wish you'd gone slower. You know why? 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 Because I got the tool set to go the other direction. Oh my god, you. No problem. It works just fine. <laughs>